Many years ago, kind of feels like many, many years ago, when I was a younger adult, and my children were actually children, we made many visits to my parents' home. It was only about a half hour drive for us, so not too far. We lived in a downtown area with lots and lots of houses and lots and lots of people. And if you're interested, a drug house across the street. But um, that blew up. Anyway, my, my parents lived in a delightful middle of nowhere sort of place with acres of grass and trees, a small and random selection of farm animals, dogs, cats, tractors to climb on, and a wide, sandy-bottomed California river with no water in it most of the time. And most important, there were chickens. So on one early spring day, when it was drizzling rain, not enough rain to fill a river by any means, we took that little half-hour journey. And one of my children asked if we could please bake cookies. Naturally, this being grandma's house, all the ingredients were there, so it took only a little effort to get started. Pour, stir, sneak a sample. When the dough was all mixed up, full of fingerprints and ready to bake, my mother suddenly said, oh wait, I need to take the chickens out of the oven before we turn it on. No. She had not forgotten to take out last night's dinner. She opened the oven and pulled out a box of fluffy little baby chicks, now disturbed, squickety peeping for all they were worth, and cute, by the way. It was one of those giggling, life-giving moments that I hope I never forget. Yes, the oven was thoroughly cleaned before the cookies were baked. She may have had a soft-hearted she may have had a soft heart when it came to baby animals, but my mother was always a germaphobe. More to the point, though, she was a mother hen, a lifelong mother hen, inclined to shelter and protect whatever came within her wingspan. As I get older, though I can pretty much guarantee there will never be baby chicks in my oven, I realize that the act of mother Henning is genetic, and it gets worse with age. In today's gospel, we find that Jesus also was a self-described mother hen. How often have I longed to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing probably sounded a little odd to his first listeners, a man claiming a woman's role, claiming to be God at the same time. That was probably not a good hit. But um, now, because we know that Mother Henning is genetic, we can conclude that God herself, our Mother God, surrounding and saturating us as she does, must also be a very old Mother Hen revealed in her son Jesus, who breathed God's own essence and owned God's longing to shelter and to protect. But I think Jesus had realized by this point in his life that even his very own chickens, the people of Jerusalem, are inclined to shout, I do it myself. Uh, free will. Yes, Bruce talks a lot about free will. I'm going to talk about stubbornness and three-year-old independence. No wings. I fly by myself. Or whatever it is that three-year-old thinks he or she can do. No wings. Now, Jesus also knows that his mortal time is short. After this episode in Luke's story, he'll not return to Jerusalem until the day we know as Palm Sunday. And that, he can already guess, may not go very well. His friends, 
will not mourn the end of Jesus' life until that fateful week. But Jesus mourns now, not for himself, but for this place and for the people in it. Jerusalem had been for more than a thousand years God's city, God's chosen people in God's chosen place. Many hundreds of years before, God had called Abram out of his homeland and into a years-long journey. This God was a stranger at that time, an unknown God to Abram and his people. And yet Abram followed and followed and followed, wandered from place to place as God asked, even when the promise of that journey Descendants enough to fill the world, children as numerous as the stars, stayed thousands of steps ahead of him and his wife, Sarah. They just kept going. And now here in Jesus' sight, here is Jerusalem, a city filled with the descendants of Abraham, the countless stars living and breathing in Abraham's own flesh. 1,600 years worth of ancestors, God's promised people. Jesus stands looking across the promised city. In only a few decades, that city would lie in ruins, victim of the Roman Empire, victim of a regime not long willing to tolerate people so different from its own ideal, subjects, to be trampled like objects. That was predictable. The Romans were brutal. And to Jesus, it was painful. There was so much more Jesus wanted to do to bring God's love to this vulnerable and hurting world. All those people, kings and the poor alike, need saving. We all know fear, we all know pain, we all know frustration and brokenness, and we all break things. In the season of Lent, we are called to a time of introspection, contemplation. Maybe we look inside ourselves and we see our own need for the shelter of warm and feathered wings. And today, we might pray that we find those. Even if we are like baby chicks, alone in the desert or on the prairie, stumbling in a tangled wood or lost in the shadowed city, we will find the brooding wings of our mother God alive in Jesus Christ. Or we may look inside and see, yes, God is here and life is good. Then it is our turn to be the wings the surrogate mother hen. Then we're called to look outward to the places where God is not found, not recognized. We are called to brood and to protect. As it was for Jesus, that brooding moment may be a moment of joy as the chicks gather or a moment of longing as they stand at a distance. Jesus could not shelter and save all Jerusalem in his time on earth, even as he and the fullness of Mother God so desired it. We don't know what we can or cannot change in anyone's life, our own included. But the very spreading of a wing might at least bring a moment's respite to someone, a bit of comfort that will continue as a vibrant thread through life. And even when the city lies in ruins, there will be a memory of having been loved, a stirring of God embracing a certain pain. That may be the best we can do. Maybe in the end, that's enough. Martin Luther King Jr. in his book, Strength to Love, said, our capacity to deal creatively with shattered dreams is ultimately determined by our faith in God. Dr. King knew that truth deeply, 
painfully and joyously. God in life, our willingness to follow expectantly, even if the journey is painfully long, changes everything. Motherless baby chicks probably wouldn't survive alone outside in the drizzling rain. But aha, uh -huh. we have boxes and ovens, and we can protect them. Abraham did not see those swelling flocks of descendants that God had promised, but he could contemplate the stars, and in their brightness he could see the years and centuries beyond his own lifespan. Jesus, God living and acting in the world, could not draw all Jerusalem into the shelter of his wings, and that brought him to tears. Likewise, no matter how deeply and brightly God resides in our own lives, not everyone we long to shelter will choose to check into life under our wings or under God's wings. Like our father Abraham, and like Dr. King, we wander and we seek a fuller view of God's face, of God's heart. Our hope lies always before us, maybe feet away, maybe thousands of steps away. But the countless stars, those same stars whose very burning makes us of their own dust, will guide us. They will light the way and call us home. And we know that life as it stretches behind us and far beyond us is long, as long and as deep and as full as God's own self. The world will not be saved, renewed, made whole in the course of 33 years or 90 years maybe even thousands. But the world will be patched up and made new and patched up and made new in God's lifetime, in God's embrace, sheltered by our holy mother hen's wing. That is the truth we live by. It got Jesus through some tough times. And it's how we are able to reimagine life in the face of shattered dreams our own lives, the lives of those we care for and love. Even in Lent, in the midst of whatever solemnity or introspection or longing we find ourselves, God with us, dear Mother Hen, is something we can and should celebrate. It's something that can pull us away from darkness and into the joy of knowing God close and warm, like a brooding mother hen, and alive like starlight inside us. <laughs>